Hey Dynamics 365 ers it's Benitez here and today I'm going to be going through part 2 of our Dynamics Portals web form series where I will be showing you how to edit and have a read-only application web form using a single entity list in Dynamics Portals. So just to recap, what I did in my previous vlog is I showed you a Dynamics Portal where the scenario is that it's Westeros recruitment, so in Game of Thrones, where people are applying for positions in the different kingdoms of Westeros. And I showed you how to save and close an application with button-like functionality, and upon saving and closing, it would redirect back to the My Applications list, and then uh, when they wanted to submit their application, they would essentially be triggering a workflow. So how it all links together when using web forms and web form steps is defined, well, illustrated in this diagram. Um, so just a quick recap, I'm utilizing entity lists uh, where the web page is referencing the entity list. It's looking at a Dynamics Portals web form, and within the web form, we've got web form steps that are calling Dynamics 365 entity forms. And so the application process is that an individual logs into the Dynamics portal, they select their uh, position that they want to apply for, so that's going through a custom entity that the web form step is referencing, and then they proceed to updating the details where that second web form step is calling the contact for that logged in portal user. And then the final web form step is essentially uh, supplying proof of evidence. So this is a compliance custom entity that surfaced through as a subgrid in the web form step of um, the application process. So what I'm going to be showing you today is how to edit and have a read-only web form when we're using a single entity list. So ideally, uh, what we want the portal user to experience is if it's unsubmitted, then they should be able to edit, and if it is submitted, then it should only be read-only. So now we're going to jump into the Dynamics portal. And I'm already logged in as a user. Just to recap, this is the community portal that I've implemented and I had so much fun um, doing the theming and, and branding for it. Okay, so we're heading to my applications. So just to explain what it is that I'm showing you is, so my web form, it's pointing to a web page, sorry, to an entity list of my applications. And when you click on a record, so not creating, you're clicking on a record that is visible within that list. It's calling a web page for details view and it's calling um, a single web form, which is my view application. And what this means is if I open this unsubmitted application, I can, I can go ahead and update the details which is great, that's what we want when the application is not submitted. However, if we go back and then we change the view to submitted, and if they click on the submitted application, you'll see that they're still able to edit um, the submitted application, which is not ideal. You don't want them to be able to edit it because it's it's now submitted. It's now with the Westeros recruitment staff to you know go ahead and approve it, not approve it, go through that process internally. So when it comes to the Dynamics portal, this should be read-only. So the way to achieve that is to use a conditional web form step. So I'm going to open up my view application web form. And you'll see that my start step is the edit program details. So what we want to do beforehand, before they even get to this step, is pretty much give them like a, for a web form step where it's got information that would be common for a user when they're wanting to view the application, whether it's unsubmitted or submitted. So that's, that's the first step that, that we need to do. 
So what I've done is I've created a new waveforms tab and it's called um, load general tab and that's because I'm calling my application entity form and I only want to load uh, the general tab because in there I've got the application ID, the date the application was created and the status of the application. So those three types of information is what I see as something that's common when someone wants to view the progress of their application. So then the next the next step that you would present to them is using, uh, sorry, not presenting to them. The next step that comes afterwards is what we call a logical web form step where it's going to check some um, conditions. So the difference with this web form step is it's not a load web form step and it's not a um, insert web form step. It is what we call a condition. And so basically, you are outlining the criteria for the web form step. So what I've defined in here is that if the status reason is not um, unsubmitted, then proceed with the web form step where it's going to show my application form in read-only mode. So this is my webform step, it's in read only and I'm showing the entire application web form. Whereas if the status reason equals unsubmitted, then I want to show them the edit program uh, details webform step. So that's what this is. So now if we go back to our web form, what I'm going to do is change this first step to my load general tab. Cool. And before I show you the change on the portal, I thought I would share a bonus tip with you. One thing that I find very useful when I'm dealing with web form steps is to give it a uh, sequential numbering so I know what um, group the web form steps belong to. So in this scenario, I've got my load um, general tab form and then I've got a check status reason web form step. So essentially these are what I call the um, like the, the predetermined criteria, no, the, the criteria for whether the web form needs to show edit or read only. And so then I've got my um, edit web form steps and then I've got my um, read only application. So that's a, that's a bonus tip for me. Okay, so I'm going to clear the cache of the Dynamics portal and we're going to go back to my applications view and I'm just going to do another refresh. Okay, and so when I now click on unsubmitted applications, we should now see the read-only section of the form, which is the general tab. So remember how I said we're now showing the application ID, we're now showing the date the application is created on, and we're now showing the status of the application. And when I hit next, this is when that conditional web form step kicks in where it goes, okay, if the status reason is does not equal unsubmitted, uh, go to the read only uh, web form step. But because it does equal unsubmitted, go ahead to the web form step where they can edit um, their program details. So as you can see, that's what it's done. And so now it'll go through the normal process of where I can go and update the information, provide my proof of evidence, and then I can go ahead and you know save and close. So this was the steps uh, that I showed you in my previous vlog. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and submit this application. So we'll see that this application has now been submitted. And when we switch over to submitted applications, 
and when we view the one that we've just submitted, it's going to go ahead and bring up that same uh, read only web form step. And then when we click on next, it's going to trigger um, the conditional web form step. And because this time the application does equal submitted, you'll see that it's a read only form now. And so if we were to go back to the unsubmitted applications, and if I just create a brand new one, Okay, so now when I open an unsubmitted application, we'll see that it's calling that step again. And then if I go next, we'll see that it has checked the status reason of the application. So just to recap, um, what we did in Dynamics 365 is that we changed the first step to be what I call a step that's going to load um, common information between an unsubmitted and a submitted application in read-only. And then the second step that it's going to call is uh, a conditional web form step where it's going to check for the status reason. So if the status reason is unsubmitted, it'll go ahead and display the web form steps where the application can be edited. Whereas if it is submitted, then it's only going to show the application where it is read only. Cool. And that's the end of our Dynamics Portals web form series. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.